Praise the Lord, family. My name is Shire Henry Scott Sr. And the current position that I operate in is an apostle in the body of Jesus Christ. Our ministry is Team Jesus USA Church. Team Jesus USA Church dot com or Team Jesus USA dot com or Team Jesus uh, International dot com. You can contact us by 614-847-2057 or 614-723-9770. I'm not here to talk about none of that stuff, give information or commercials. I'm here to share with what God has shared with me on last night. Um, up extremely later than normal last night, and I was compelled to just listen to some, go to YouTube and just listen to some shout music and, and praise music. Um, I worshiped myself out. I've been praying and I was like, I don't want to, I don't, I just felt a heaviness and I wanted to shake that heaviness. And so I, I switched it to, to praise and shout music and was watching praise breaks on the internet. And while watching the praise breaks on the internet, the Lord spoke to me concerning the walls of Jericho. Now, I'm not going to sit here and say I am a prophet per se, but I believe beyond the shadow of any and every doubt, anybody with the Holy Ghost can be used in any of the gifts that God has given us through him. And, and also, we never should say what we are, what we're not. We, we just vessels being used by God. So some may see this as prophetic, and because it's the word of God, it is prophetic. But don't don't focus so far in on, oh, he's giving prophecy. It's not even about that. It's about, I'm just sharing what God shared with me. So last night, like I said, when I was listening to the shout music, I was just bobbing my head, laying in the bed, you know, just allowing my spirit to be. And then it starts stirring up, like most preachers or teachers, when the praise music starts, the, the, the gifts start staring in the body. And God started speaking to me about the walls coming down. And I'm going to share with you in scripture here in a second. First, let us pray. Father in heaven, in the name of Jesus Christ, we thank you for this 4-2-2020, Lord Jesus. So many have gone on to make their calling and election sure. And they have gone on from their, 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 their rewards that they will receive from the deeds they've done in their body and their flesh, Father God. We thank and praise you in the name of Jesus for the Holy Spirit, Father God, that's moving across the land. See, we so quick to talk about anything and everything else that's anti but we, we fail, Father God, to give you the glory for your spirit, Father God, that's moving breast to breast and chest to chest. I keep hearing the spirit remind me of that, that God is still speaking. He's still moving. God is still God. And we need to continue to lift Jesus Christ up. And he will draw all men in these times and these seasons. Father, just ask and pray that the words of my mouth and meditation of my heart be pleasing in your sight. Whoever's supposed to hear, Father God, let them have an ear to hear what the spirit is saying to the church. We the people, the almighty people of God. I thank you and praise you for this opportunity. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Hallelujah and amen. I'm going to try and be as fast as humanly possible. This is being recorded to my phone. I'm going to try and upload it to Facebook and probably YouTube um, if I'm able. Because they're beginning to shut down anything and everything and making people stay home. So I'm going to try and um, get this uh, thing done as, as quickly as possible, as human as possible. Um, Lord have mercy. Enemy ain't got nothing better to do. But uh, we'll be speaking to you out of the book of um, Joshua, the sixth chapter. And um, I'll be sharing, like I said, what God shared with me. Um, like I said, I was listening to praise music and, and the gifts of the Spirit start stirring. And all of a sudden, I, I, I realized that... Um, I really, really needed to, to, to hear what the God was speaking to me, and he immediately uh, directed me to Joshua uh, chapter 6. And Joshua chapter 6 says on this wise, Now Jericho was straightly shut up because of the children of Israel. None went out and none came in. So we hear that now Jericho was straightly shut up because of the children of Israel. None went out and none came in. And don't that sound familiar as to what's going on right now? Nobody's allowed to go out. Nobody's allowed to come in. Now, like I said, I don't want you to get all spiritually deep with me, but just hear what the spirit is saying. Verse two, and the Lord said unto Joshua, see, I have given into thine hand Jericho and the king thereof. And the mighty men of valor, verse 3, and ye shall compass the city, all ye men of war, and go round about the city once. Thus shalt thou do six days. 
Now, one thing I know beyond the shadow of every and any doubt uh, concerning Almighty God is that when God speaks to his people, he gives specific instructions and directions concerning what he desires for us to do to come out. That's why it is so important to not allow anything else in your ear gate. You know, I, I thank God I don't, I, I'm not able to get the news by way of the news channels and radios or TVs or whatever. So in order for me to get news, I literally have to go on the internet and, and go get it. Unless I, feel, unless I feel led by the Holy Spirit, I literally don't go on any news things because I don't need to know what any, anything else is saying. I want to tune in. And I know people say, well, you need to know what's going on. No, I need to know what God is saying because I'm a Christian. So I need to know beyond a shadow of doubt what God is saying. And, and you shall compass the city, all ye men of war, and go round about the city once. Thus shalt thou do six days. Verse 4. And seven priests shall bear before the ark seven trumpets of ram's horns. And, and the seventh day you shall compass the city seven times, and the priests shall blow with trumpets. Verse 5. And it shall come to pass that when they make a long blast, with the ram's horn, and when you hear the sound of the trumpet, all the people shall shout with a great shout, and the wall of the city shall fall down flat, and the people shall ascend up, every man straight before him. So God has not only given specific instructions as to what they need to do to get the results they want, but he literally said the walls are going to fall flat. What that means is that you're not going to have to climb over anything. You know, you know, you know, he's, he's made it to where all you have to do is walk in and possess what he told you that you're going to have. That's one thing that we who choose to believe God understand beyond a shadow of any and every doubt is when God says something, he's going to do exactly what he said. That's why it's so important that we hear what the spirit is saying to the church. Verse six, and Joshua, the son of Nun, called the priests and said unto them, take up the ark of the covenant. And let seven priests bear seven trumpets of ram's horns before the ark of the Lord. And he said unto the people, pass on and come past the city and let him that is armed pass on before the ark of the Lord. Verse eight. And it came to pass when Joshua had spoken unto the people, the seven priests bearing the seven trumpets of ram's horns passed on before the Lord and blew with trumpets and the ark of the covenant of the Lord followed them. Verse 9, and the armed men went before the priests and blew with the trumpets, and the reward, the, the, re, the reward came after the ark. Those coming behind from pulling up the rear. The priests going on and blowing with trumpets. Verse 10, and Joshua had commanded the people, saying, You shall not shout nor make any noise with your voice, neither shall any word proceed out of your mouth until the day I bid you shout. Then shall you shout. And what the Lord was speaking to me concerning that verse of scripture in verse 10 in Joshua chapter 6 is that there is an appointed time for us to shout. Now, we all know when the praises go up, the blessings come down. And I pray and hope in the name of Jesus Christ that people are getting their praise on right now for what God is about to do. Because like we used to say in the church, we don't wait till it's over. We thank and praise God right now. Because the appointed time for shouting and praising God has been passed. We, 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 soon as this, this test and this thing started to happen, we should have been praising and thanking God for delivering us because we know God is going to do exactly what he said he's going to do. Verse 11, so the ark of the, ark of the Lord compassed the city going about it once. And they came into the camp and lodged in the camp. Verse 12, and Joshua rose early in the morning and the priests took up the ark. 13, and seven priests bearing seven trumpets and ram's horn before the ark of the Lord went on continually and blew with the trumpets. And the armed men went before them. But the reward came after the ark. The re-reward. The, the guys who came up the rear came after the ark. And the Lord and the priests going on and blowing with the trumpets. 14. And the second day they compassed the city once. And return into the camp, so they did six days. Verse 15. And it came to pass on the seventh day, the seventh day, seventh day that they rose early about the dawning of the day and compassed the city after the, the manner seven times. Only 
on the day they compassed the city seven times. Only on that day, or that day, that day they compassed the city seven times. So he told them they rose early on the seventh day, and after seven times, they compassed the city seven times, as in verse 15. It's important you understand that word seven. Seven means complete. Seven means finished. Seven means a whole lot of stuff. And it's prophetic even right now in this time and this season. And I was meditating and asking God, God, should I really should I tell people in seven days they should do something? And I didn't hear specifically or clearly that in seven days we are to do something. But it's not no mistake that this is happening during the time of uh, our, our observ ob observation of Passover. Verse 16, and it came to pass at the seventh time when the priest blew with the trumpets, Joshua said unto the people, shout, for the Lord has given you the city. 17, hold on, let me, hold on, let me go back. I heard the Holy Spirit speaking. And it came to pass at the seventh time when the priest blew the trumpets, Joshua said unto the people, shout, for the Lord has given you the city. So Joshua was listening intently to the instructions that God had given him to do. He said, on the seventh time, shout. That's when you shout, on the seventh time. Now, this, this was back then. I want you to understand something, that the, the, the Old Testament was a foreshadow of the, for, the things that Jesus Christ would fulfill and give us power to do and operate in. So we read these scriptures, and sometimes people prophetically take them out of context. That's why it's important we know how to rightly divide the word of truth. So... It's important that whoever you are lending your ear to is speaking from God and you can hear what the Spirit is saying to the church because if you don't follow the instructions and don't do what God is telling you to do, I'm not saying you're going to be destroyed, but you're not going to get what God said you can have. And it came to pass at the seventh time when the priest blew the trumpets, Joshua said unto the people, shout for the Lord has given you the city, 17, and the city shall be accursed, even it, and all they are therein, to the Lord. Only Rahab the harlot shall live. She and that are with her house because she hid the messengers that we sent. 18. And ye in, and ye in any wise keep yourselves from the accursed thing. Least ye make yourselves accursed. You need to hear this stuff. You hear this? Keep it says in 18. And you in any wise, keep yourselves from the accursed thing. I hear that being, being, being hit on real hard. Keep yourselves from the accursed thing. Least you make yourselves accursed when you take of the accursed thing. I can, I, can, I can elaborate, but I don't feel like I'm supposed to. You need to hear what the accursed thing is. You need to hear within yourself what the Spirit is letting you know what you need to stay away from during this time and season. And make the camp of Israel a curse and trouble fit. So not only if you partake of the curse thing and bring it back, you make the whole camp cursed. You hear that? 19. But all the silver, all the gold, vessel, brass, or iron are consecrated unto the Lord. They shall come into the sanctuary, excuse me, into the treasury of the Lord. And what I'm, what I'm hearing from that verse of scripture by way of the Holy Spirit is 2 Chronicles chapter 20 when the Bible lets us know the ambushments when they happen and they, it, it was three or four days picking up all the stuff from the dead. The wealth of the wicked. <laughs> so the people shouted when the priest blew with the trumpets and it came to pass when the people heard the sound of the trumpet and the people shouted with a great shout that the wall fell down flat. So that the people went up into the city, every man straight before him, and they took the city. It fell flat. Like I said before, what we are going through to get to, there won't be any obstacles to inherit what God is about to give you as a result of you hearing, listening, and obeying, and, and, and taking dominion over the things that God has given us. Verse 21, and they utterly destroyed all that was in the city, both men, women, young and old and ox and sheep and ass with the edge of the sword. But Joshua had said unto the two men that had spied out the country, go into the harlot's house and bring out thence the woman and all that she have as he swore unto her. So the only person was saved out of that whole situation 
was Rahab. You can read about Rahab and her history. That's not what I'm here to talk about. The Lord had gave me by way of revelation as I prepare to close is that the body of Jesus Christ right now is being unified in praise. Because when we are, or when they are, I should say, because I've, I've continued to, to do services as God has obeyed me and commanded me to do. My services have not stopped or hindered in any way, shape, or form. But it's a little bit different for me because I'm traveling. I'm a traveling missionary style pastor and I'm preaching and teaching as I'm going on the internet. So I'm not throwing salt. So it's different for me. I don't have a congregation I have to be responsible for. So I don't know what God is telling these pastors to do. But I'm saying this, God has, has told me that we, for the first time in a long time, the body have been unified. We will be unified in praise because when people are allowed to go back and, 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 and gather as a congregation for the first time in a long time, the body of Christ will be celebrating Jesus Christ for what he just had done concerning this virus. I mean, you're going to have country churches praising God for the same reason that, that, that churches in the hood are going to be praising God for. This is the first time in a long time. So what the devil meant for bad, God is going to use for good. And what he has done is he has, he, 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 the devil has pushed people into the closets, in rooms, in houses, and forced them to pray unto God and cry unto God. So right now there's a unified prayer and praise going up before God right now. They're all being collected. Send up timber. Right now, people are praying. Preachers are preaching more than often now on the internet, which is what they should have been done from the first, in, the, in the beginning, because the internet goes all out the world, all out over the world. So people have been pushed to do what God intended for them to do from the giddy up. So for the first time, we will be unified in praise. In Hebrews eleven thirty says, "By faith, the walls of Jericho fell down after they were compassed about seven days." So what has to happen is is being done by faith. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So they're not seeing it with their natural eye. So it's only the people of God who will understand the things that God is about to do and why we should be rejoicing. So I'm telling you right now, stop whining, stop crying, repent, ask God to forgive you for all the sins you sinned against him, omission, commission, sins you don't know about to, repent, repent, repent. And after you repent, get up like David did after the child was dead. David said, is the child dead? They said, the child is dead. This is in the scripture. Read it for yourself. When, when him and Bathsheba had that child and, and Nathan came and told David, thou art the man, David could have been destroyed. But then when Nathan said, you're not going to die, your wife's not going to die, you're not going to lose your, your, your kingdom, but that, that, that baby that is going to die. And David was like, no. And he went and fasted and prayed. And people are fasting and praying right now. They're fasting and praying, believing God for God, do this and do that. God already did what he's going to do and what he allowed this to be done for is what's, what's about to happen. So once they came and told David the baby was dead, David got up and washed himself, changed his clothes, went to the house of the Lord and got his worship on. That's what's coming for us next. You need to be getting yourself ready because when you go inside them doors or wherever you go and worship or wherever you assemble, the, the praise team ain't going to have to pump you up. The preacher ain't going to have to pump you up. People from the front to the back to the side to the left, they're just going to be so happy. I was glad when they said to me, let us go into the house. People are just going to be so happy to be praising God together. You're going to be able to look in the eyes of people you may not have loved or could stand before. And you're going to be, look, I'm so glad we back in here praising God together. That's what's about to happen. The enemy, we're about to become his worst enemy because what he thought he was going to do that was going to make it bad, he just gave us a unified praise. And that's what the Bible talks about in Ephesians 4. They, we were unified in the faith. And so this is not about denomination. This is not about where you live, your color of skin, how much money you have or don't have. This is about a unified praise that we're going to come together and give Almighty God. It's coming. And I've been sent here to tell you to get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready and prepare for what God is about to do because he's already done it. And that means you can start praising him in advance. So when we come together, and one can send a thousand, two can send ten thousand, two can come together, touch and agree, and we praising God because we all know He brought us through a mighty thing. Amen. So get ready, Father in heaven. I thank and praise you for this word that you've given me. I pray in the name of Jesus Christ that I delivered it the way you wanted me to. I said what you wanted me to say, no more, no less. I pray that it gets through to who it needs to get through to. People can shout, rejoice, and believe you for what you said in your word, Father God. Have your will and have your way. In the name of Jesus, I pray for all my enemies, my frenemies, anybody and everybody, Father God, in the name of Jesus Christ. I have no all in my heart towards anybody, Father God. I have a clear conscience concerning the things you've called me to do, will, and say. We love you and we praise you. In Jesus Christ's name, we pray. Get your praise on, saints. Hallelujah and amen.